my husband and I moved to the Big Island from Oahu with the dream of starting a farm and feeding the world. <laughs> These two bills not only want to ban the growing importation and consumption of GM products, but require farmers to register their plantings on a public website, and we all know what that would lead to. Do you really want to kill my farm, even with any kind of exemptions for specialty crops, by advertising to the world that the Big Island is even considering banning all GM products developed through science and technology? It is implying that our farmers, ranchers, and agricultural researchers and scientists are criminals and are engaging in distributing toxic food to our community, our neighbors, friends, and family. How wrong is that? Have you no shame? There is no scientific evidence that can hold up to peer review, which states that crops grown with the benefit of biotechnology are different from crops grown with conventional methods. I'd like to address a few points to the bills. Requirements for registration are an invasion of privacy. Here are sections which require farmers to submit the location of their farm to a public website for the supposed purpose of enforcement. For your information, the police already know the locations of almost all of our farms in East Hawaii already because almost all of our farms have already been vandalized. I have personally filed over 10 police reports for my own farm. Putting my farm on a website would now open it up to vandalism by anti-GMO fanatics. I am sure that as you listen to the testimonies being presented in the past and today, that you understand what I am saying. Who is going to pay for the increased damage that will occur with these bills? Are you trying to, separ are you trying to equate farmers to sex offenders? This bill is all wrong. Is that my bell? Yes, you're, that's it. Thank you very much. Mr. Madamba. Uh, good evening, <coughs> County Council. Uh, my name is Michael Madamba. Sir, can you pull the microphone toward you? Thank you. Start his time over, please. Better? Yes, sir. All right. Well, good evening, County Council. My name is Michael Madamba, third generation farmer here on the island. The whole this testimony today has been uh, has been about is it safe? Health concerns. If this counts, is this body? concludes that it's not safe and you guys pass these bills. What about the 29 pages of processed foods with GM products in them? If you're gonna protect the public, protect the public as a whole. What's the justification in that? I just don't see it. Logical thinking would be, if you're gonna ban one thing that's not, that you guys think is not safe, ban it all. Ban all of it then we'll, all of us will be on even, even grounds. I'm talking about the Similac that you know, a lot of these people feed their kids, right? Then ban it all. Then we will see what the food costs on this island, where will it go? You guys talk about bus fares, not, you know, the normal people cannot afford bus fare, right? That, you guys are talking about a dollar here and there, and they cannot afford it. And now the food costs on this island, we're gonna triple or even quadruple. And now you're gonna put that burden on normal families, hardworking families that cannot even afford a dollar to ride the bus. Where's the logic in that? You guys tell me. I just want justification if you guys are gonna pass these bills why we continue to import these GM products, 29 pages of them. Why are we allowing the public to still eat them? if it's not safe. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. James Friday, Gabriel Nogtalon. Gabriel. Okay, come on up. Mr. Friday, please uh, turn the red light on by pressing the bar. Identify yourself and you may go ahead with your testimony. Good evening, County Council. My name is James Friday. I live in Hilo. Thank you for staying late this evening and taking testimony. Um, uh, there's been a lot of discussion on the health effects of GMO foods um, as people are eating them. I think if you truly believe that GMO foods are bad for our health, we need to ban GMO foods. And your target shouldn't be the farmers. The target should be the supermarkets. I think you have to look in the supermarkets and look at everything that is in our supermarkets is produced GMO-based. 
all the corn chips, everything that's got corn sweetener in it, everything that's soybean based, probably has GMO in it already. So if you truly think that, we should be talking about going through the supermarkets and banning the sale of all those foods on our supermarkets. If you don't believe that GMO is bad for your health, then you shouldn't be picking on the farmers and should be supporting the farmers and not passing these bills that are banning GMOs. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Noctilon, am I saying your name correctly? Yes. Thank you. Please yeah. go ahead. Aloha, Madam Chair. My name is Gabriel Noctilon, and I am from Oahu. I now live on the Big Island. I go to KL High School, and I am here to support the local farmers, myself, and my family. I strongly oppose Bill 109 and 113. I also, ha I also was here in June and testified against Bill 79. I feel that it is the consumer's choice to eat what they want and do what they want. It was my choice to testify, it was my choice to eat what I want, and it's my choice to do what I want to do. Now I choose to become a farmer, but these bills I feel now that I, I don't want to do it anymore. Basically what I feel is that these bills are telling me not to become a farmer. That is not right. Look at the pro other problems we are facing, such as fossil fuel problems we are having, such as the economic problem that we are facing. We are also losing our natural resources. Now that we have biotech and a good resource that we have, we are going to ban it and reduce our resources even more. I have a future that I want to pursue. With these bills, I, I <coughs> with these bills always coming out, I feel that my future will be disappointing and hard. I want to go to college and major in agriculture. What happens if I find a new way to be help farmers pro protect their produce? With these bills, I won't be able to share my knowledge with them. Biotech is a is basically a flu shot for fruits or vegetables. A flu shot is to protect us humans from disease. Biotech protects produce from viruses and other obstacles. As uh, someone else said that um, he is GMO, I'm also GMO. Not because I eat GMO products, but because I take flu shots from a certified doctor to keep me healthy. I'm 17 years old and I'm as healthy as a horse. To those... Oh. <clears throat> Um, to conclude my testimony, I feel that these bills that are anti-GMO are written and based off little information. I feel that it's the people's choice to do what they want. These bills are taking away that right of choice. We need everyone to support each other and not fight with each other. Thank you. Thank you so much. Russell Nagata and Shandell Asuncion. Shandell, come on up. Russell, please go ahead. Okay, thank you for uh, allowing me to testify today. Uh, I'm a Hilo resident, Jay Yoshimoto's district. I am a, a trained uh, scientist, plant breeding and genetics. And I am against Bill 109 and 113, based on the science where it is good, no one has ever proven it to be damaging to our health or our well-being. It also has the scientific or in the endorsement of scientific organizations throughout the world as saying that GMO food products are safe. Also, I support organic culture, permaculture, conventional agriculture, the use of GMOs. They're all safe, they all add to our sustainable food supplies that we so desperately need on the island. And our conversation should be, how can we foster a cooperative spirit to produce more food for the island's people at an affordable price? History has shown that when you have two polarized groups, they try to beat each other into the ground instead of working cooperatively. So I ask this council to look forward, be future thinking, and to help the community heal, work together to produce a community that will have a larger safe food supply. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Asuncion? Good afternoon. Okay. My name is Shandela Sanchen and I am from the Waikea House Lots area in Hilo. Um, I am in support of Bill 109 as well as Bill 113, both of which are here to protect Hawaii Island, our diversity, our seed heritage, and our indigenous lifestyles. In general, GMOs are a threat to our environment. Agricultural crops have several hundred varieties. These varieties have sustained us for thousands of years. We cannot coexist with GMOs. GMO crops will reduce and eliminate those varieties wherever they are grown. GMO crops create dependency 
making it impossible for anyone to live a self-sustainable lifestyle. As a mother, I raised my children to be independent, to care for our Aina, to recycle, reuse, and to reduce their carbon footprint. We cannot be self-sustainable if we are dependent on corporations who own our seed supply. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nest Nestor Asuncion. Nestor, oh, followed by our last testifier, E.K. Payne. Good Sir, push the the bar at the base of the microphone. The red light will come on. Thank you. Give your name, and you may testify. Okay. My name is Nestor Asuncion, and I am for the bill. 109 and 113. I have been watching a lot of videos about GMO and listening to a lot of testify uh, both here and in Kauai. And what I have thought of is something different. Um, if I was a scientist, that can create a genetically modified product and be able to patent it so that no one can um, dissect it or find out what's in it because you're bound to be sued if you do that. Um, we don't know. You won't know what I put in that product. I can hide a gene in there that can kill people or feed people. Um, we got a lot of poisonous plants that it can be introduced in there. What I'm saying is you won't know because it's patented and it's hidden. There have been some that I read that they put an infertility gene in one of a genetically modified product. And we don't know that we're, we don't know it. But we cannot even test it because it's patented. How are we able to find out if it is poisonous or not? That's one thing that has to be taken, considered of in deciding whether to pass this bill or not. Because this is an example of a biological weapon that can be done. <coughs> Science is there to be able to do it. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your testimony. Your time is up. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Payne, you will not be the last testifier. <laughs> Please go ahead. <laughs> Aloha, Council. My name is E.K. Payne. Um, I am in support of Bill 109 and also 113. I'm an organic farmer out in Puna. I'm also sixth generation here in Hawaii farming on Oahu and also on the Big Island. Um, I think the thing that we need to look at and step away from is regardless of the money or regardless of the individuality with the different farmers or the farms, we need to look at the health of the land and what's going to be the healthiest thing for our Aina and for the people that have to perpetuate it even long after we're gone. So regardless of the vis visceral response that people are giving, we have to make sure that we're looking at the viability for our sustainability for our island as a whole. Nothing more, nothing less. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Payne. Carrie Marks and Ted Bruckner. Mr. Bruckner. Mr. Bruckner, you're there first, so you can push the, the thing and start your testimony. Okay. Good evening. And Would you pull the microphone close? And, okay. And please here. give your name and start his time over again, please. My name is Ted Bruckner, and good evening, everybody. I'd like to say that I'm opposed to the genetically modified foods because... Originally, they were presented to us in the early 90s as a solution to the world's hunger problem by being able to produce more food. But it's been proven by 
the amount of years that's passed by that they actually produce up maybe 6% less yield than the regular amount of uh, the regular food. And so I've done uh, some research and in Europe, one of the genetically modified food companies had a scientist, they asked him to do some research and put together a paper saying what it's all about. And he did a little too good of a job and they got really mad at him because he said, I, if I had a choice to eat genetically modified food or not, I would not eat it because it shrinks the internal organs and causes other bad damage to the inside. And also when it comes to the animals, going, they're more, they don't have the discrimination we do, but they do have some natural instincts. Farmers have gone and shown, done tests where they've seen where the genetically modified crops have not been eaten by the animals when they've had a choice. Once uh, the farmer had, is that my time up? No, you have 30 seconds. Oh, well, I won't go into the story, but basically the, the animals always chose the natural food. They wouldn't touch the organic food unless there wasn't any other food, except for one time when there wasn't any food, they ate a little bit of it, but then they never came back to it again. So what does that say? And also the bees that are disappearing. I believe the bees, all this Roundup Ready is genetically modified into the food, so the bees get this poison through the pollen and then they die off. So please, vote for this bill. All right. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, committee. I have a list of names that I'm also testifying for. Um, I'm also t speaking today for Jenny Passa, Alan Passa Jr., Alan Passa III, Shannon Passa, Sherry Passa, Wayne Campbell Jr., Kaylee Campbell, Bailey Campbell, Candy Passa, Kaimani Passa, Lorianne Kim, Amy Konanui, Sherry Moore, Josephine Kaliapio, Jane Whitefield, Sharon Williford, Ron Fujiyoshi, Amara Karuna, Luana Jones, and my family, my husband Dan Marks, and my four children, Brittany Peterson, Jackie Marks, Pete Marks, and Denver Marks. You can start my time now, please. No, no, you, your time has been. Rolling. My time has been going. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the most important thing I actually have to say, and I really, actually, I'm not going to repeat what everybody else has said. I want you guys to get to discussion. I want to hear discussion tonight. I don't want to come back for four hours on Friday. I uh, I support both the bills. I say let's have some discussion. Let's mash it out and figure out one good bill and get it on the books. Let's get it to council. Um, I I'm glad you agenda the summit. I wonder if that was held after 5 p.m. and how fresh you were when you heard that spiel. I would like to hear about what happened and what you remember of it, if anything, because I think it was in the evening. I encourage you all to stay, you know, as long as you can. Yeah, the last council stayed till midnight. Thank you, Ms. Marks. Mr. Salas? Unless I get another thing, this is the last testifier. Fernando, please have a seat. Aloha, Council. Aloha. Get real close to that microphone and give your name, okay. please. My name is Fernando Salas. I'm an organic farmer. And I heard a lot of chaffling um, here. The, you guys, you know, like... <laughs> When it comes to GMOs and non-GMOs, you know, you guys manage to shuffle words. Yes, I'm pro, I'm not. It's, that's kind of impression I get when I hear some of you. You know, it's very confusing where you end support of having an island away from GMOs, an island with no GMOs, no more GMOs on this island. Protect the history, the heritage people here, you know? And it seems to me like you guys shuffling too many words, you know, decisions and said Mrs. Willie, Mrs. Brenda, you know, the other ones is like, I don't get it. You guys are in support of GMOs or you guys are not in support of GMOs. You guys can make up your mind. You know, it's obvious that if it's GMOs are not good for people, 
oh, these people are saying that they don't do any damage to anybody else. So why can't they cooperate on keeping this island free from GMOs? You know, take it elsewhere. We need one place on this world to be free of GMOs, sea contamination, and monopolizing, monopolizing the industry. You know, how is that that you gotta buy seas? You know, that they patent it, you know? That's not real, that's some kind of scam, organized crime. Get a grip, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Solis. Okay, um, hang on, folks. Um, we had a little discussion. I want to have both the first two bills read in uh, so we can talk about them simultaneously. Um, and